Uh, our next speaker is Philip Nivot, and he's going to talk to us about um, 10 years of, of biomapping in Plansburg National Park, mm -hmm. which is in the northwest mm -hmm. province of South That's Africa. And Philip has been uh, working there, uh, doing volunteer work as an honorary officer from 2011 till 2018 and also helping out there with um, private tours as a guide. So over to you, Philip. Thank you for, for joining us this evening. Uh, are you unmuted, Sorry. Philip? Yep. Yep. So there we go. <laughs> we can hear yeah. you now. <laughs> I'm not too used to this uh, meeting presentation, so please bear with yes, me. It, so, it so takes a while. So it's going to be a, a, a very a quick game drive through Pilansburg, through the records that I've, uh, not all the records, uh, there's just way too many records, but um, present with uh, some of the records that I've uh, taken in the park over the last 10 years. So over the last 10 years, I spent at least, at least 120 days, full days in the park, as uh, Megan said, as a volunteer um, honorary officer or ranger and also as a freelance um, field guide. So where is the Pilansburg National Park? Oh, why is this thing not responding? Oh, there we go. Um, so where is the Pilansburg National Park? As she said, it's in the northwest province, about 140 kilometers from Pretoria, 160 60 kilometers from uh, Johannesburg. It's part of the Bushveld complex uh, geological uh, area. And uh, if you look on the side here, there is a, an alkaline complex and that is the Pilansburg. It's an old, it's an ancient volcano that was formed 1.2 billion years ago. Approximately 60,000 hectares in size, approximately 26, 27 kilometers across and about 25, 20, 22, 25 kilometers uh, north to south. Um, a number of fairly large dams in it, um, mainly valleys and hills, rocky outcrops, typical bushveld area with many um, grass, grassy areas as well. Um, it's made up mainly of two uh, quarter degree squares that covers more than 95 percent of the of the of the area. Um, only about five kilometers of the 200 odd kilometers of roads that the that the public can drive on falls outside of these two quarter degree squares. That's one of the entrances to the park uh, at Manyani Gate. This is the rangers camp where I've spent quite a lot of time over the last 10 years and if I didn't stay in the rangers camp I roughed it a bit and uh, my office looked like that. Um, as I said, hills and valleys with a number of fairly large dams, grassy areas, typical bushveld area, number of fairly large dams, very nice heights on each of the dams. There's a number of rivers flowing out of the park. The park is higher than the surrounding area, so there's no rivers flowing into the park. All the rivers are flowing out of the park. Um, trees in the park, yeah, it's a bit, of a bit of an embarrassment. I don't think we spend enough time taking photos of trees, but this is just a handful of the trees that do occur in the park. A russet bush willow, a cork bush, common protea on the higher areas, your uh, willow beechwood or bukenhout. Um, one of the specials in the park is your Transvaal red balloon. Uh, when they flower, it's quite spectacular. There's only a few, I, I know of only a, a few examples in the park. On the hills, you find the red milkwoods. Um, on the eastern side, there's quite a lot of stink shepherd's trees uh, or, yeah, and silver cluster leaf. Reptiles. There's a very good collection of reptiles in the park. And I think one of my favorites would definitely be the black mamba, which uh, occur more often than people think. Um, other snakes that I have encountered, a very nice brown house snake that visited us in the ranger's quarters one day, a western yellow-bellied sand snake, 
puff adders are very common, especially at night. They do come out to um, pick up some heat from the roads. And unfortunately, uh, there is quite a bit of road kill. And this, this is an example of a striped grass snake that um, its last duty on earth was to become part of the virtual museum. Um, the lizard family, interesting uh, creatures like the distant uh, ground agama. Your southern tree agamas, especially in breeding season when they develop the very nice blue heads. Um, some of the specials like the common rough scaled lizards. And then wherever you go at the heights or in the camps or wherever, your common variable skink. The larger ones, we have both the water monitor and the rock monitor in the park with the, with the water monitor having a sharper or more pointy um, nose and your rock monitor having a more square nose and then plenty crocodiles and fairly big ones. Um, terrapins and turtles uh, and tortoises, serrated hinge terrapins, South African marsh terrapins, leopard tortoises. I have seen Lubatsi hinge tortoises, etc. Um, so there's quite a good collection of um, tortoises. When we get to the mammals, and I think this is the main reason why people do go to the park, it is classified as a, a big five reserve. So we do have all the the, the lion and, and, and rhino and all the, the big ones that everybody go for. Um, it is one of the challenges in the park to, to biomap because you're not allowed to get out of your vehicle due to the presence of dangerous animals. So you, all the photographs or most of the photographs you are seeing tonight was taken through the window of my vehicle with a few exceptions where you get out at a hide and take uh, pictures at the hide. Um, some interesting things that you will never see in the park again, sable antelope. Um, they disappeared from the park about seven years ago. Um, after the lion numbers increased, the sable antelope numbers went down and they eventually decided to take them out about seven years ago. Other interesting sightings, a caracal sighting that I spotted while monitoring a lion sighting doing um, control of, of the public making sure they don't get out of their vehicles or driving to the felt. Um, casually strolled past my window. That's why I've got a strange angle of this fellow. I didn't even see it approaching me. Uh, similarly, uh, monitoring a leopard sighting, um, a, a honey badger walked past my car. So it's something that you don't, you think, yes, I hope I see one of those one day. And yes, this was just my lucky day where I did see it. As I mentioned, Big Five um, Reserve with your Cape uh, or your African Buffalo, your Elephant, Rhino, Lion, and uh, yeah, I'll get to the, the Leopard just now. Um, lion was introduced back into the park in the 1990s, early 90s. Elephant, the big, there were six big bull elephants introduced into the park in, the 19, in 1998 um, because initially there were only youngsters and females introduced into the park and the youngsters decided that it was a good idea to have a go at the rhinos and they killed quite a number of rhinos and they had to reintroduce some mature bull elephant from Kruger and this is one, this is Amarula, one of the more naughty ones and his hobby is to turn cars upside down. And then leopard. I think everybody want to see leopard in the park. It's a it, there's a big opportunity in this opportunity in this park to see leopard. So over the last ten years, I've had at least I've said, I had more than forty leopard sightings throughout the park, and I've been keeping track of where I have seen them. And there is um, a program in the park, an identification program in the park, to to track them and name them. There's more than 60 leopards that's been identified in the park. So there's quite a lot of leopard in the park. This is just a few examples. Matsumai is juvenile. So there is the one the other one hiding there. And that is Matsumai, their mother, Boketi and the clover male. They all are named and it's quite easy to identify them. This is the Ketla female, the first one that I showed you. And they're identified based on the patterns on their forehead, the patterns on the side of the, hair, the head, the what we call the whisker spots on the side of the snout. There's two whisker spots there, two whisker spots there. And usually there are some other um, identifying 
patches of, of um, rosettes on the body which you use to identify them. And that's all recorded by the Pilans Perk Leopard Project. They've just released a, a booklet with all the um, identified leopards in the park. Um, cheetah, about six or seven years ago, two male cheetah entered the park and soon after that a female was introduced and they started breeding and there's a very good uh, population, well a good population, it ranges between six and ten um, animals because they try to keep the numbers down. Um, and there's also a pack of wild dogs in the park. So my personal view is there's too many um, apex predators in the park. I think there's there's at least 60 lion and maybe 40 or 50 leopard at any given time, and about 10 cheetah and 12 wild dogs and all sorts of things. So it's a very it's very tough on the antelope and smaller mammal population. Um, Blackback jackal and South African giraffe. If you look at the records on the virtual museum. Um, more than 60% of the records on the museum uh, is made up by four animals only. That's elephant, lion, leopard, and giraffe, uh, funny enough. Some other interesting mammals, scrub hare, banded mongoose, Mauritian tombat. Uh, it's got a favorite hangout spot at one of the heights, and if you know where to look, you're just about guaranteed to find it. One of the sengi or elephant shrews. Um, we have red hartebeest in the park, springbok, club springer and steenbok. And then of course your monkeys and chachma baboon, rock, uh, cape rock hyrax and South African ground squirrel. So a very good population of, of, of sorry, a variety of mammals uh, through the park. Then one of my favorites of course is the odonata. This is one of the very first uh, damselflies I've taken in the park, a cat's, heights, a cat's head sprite. It took me about two weeks to identify it because all the field guides pointed me into this direction, but the field guide said that they mainly occur in the Limpopo Valley. So this was just a very good record in the park of a cat's, hide, ca cat's head sprite. Um, other damselflies, your slate sprite, swarthy sprite, your Maasai sprite, and your tropical blue tail. I think the tropical blue tail seem to be occurring everywhere. I haven't been to a place where I haven't found some tropical blue tail. And the dragonfly front, some nice common tiger tail, wandering gliders or pantalas. I don't think any dragonfly collection is complete without a photo of a red vein drop wing and also a nice one of a violet drop wing. Frogs, now uh, I've, uh, once again, it's not that easy to get to the sides of the rivers or places where you would find frogs, but I have found some interesting frogs, a giant bullfrog, for example, on the road one night um, catching insects, a red toad, busy displaying and calling. And what you see a lot is the foam nests of the southern foam nest frog. I haven't seen the frogs that often, but you very often see the foam nests of the frogs. I only found one scorpion in the park so far under my ground sheet when I packed my uh, kit up after one weekend in the park. One of this, this less, uh, lesser thick-tailed scorpion. Dung beetles also, um, the majority of the dung beetles in the park is, is usually your large copper tail, uh, your large copper dung beetle and your scarabus species, but you also find your green dung beetles and this uh, Sisyphus species I found in the Manjani camp one day and that um, dung beetle is not even a centimeter in length. So it's one of the smaller ones and the the ball of dung was also only about 12, 13 millimeters in diameter. Fish, that's a big challenge because at the heights you are not always very close to the waterfront. So it, you take what you get. Sometimes you, with a bit of luck and without too much reflection, you do manage to, to, to take some photos of fish. So that's a blue kerper, a barbel or a catfish on the side and a red breasted tilapia or red kerper. Mushroom map, it's bush felt area, so it's dry and hot usually most of the time, but you very often after rains do find mushrooms growing in elephant dung. 
um, like this unknown fungus, this mushroom species that I'm still waiting for some identification. Your false ink cap or your desert shaggy mane, you see a lot of them growing on this on, on um, termite mounts. And then your bracket species, there's quite a number growing on dead wood throughout the park. Lepi map, you know, this is also a challenge because you cannot just chase after the, 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 the butterflies and moths. Now, this is a day flying moth that I found in the, in the park, a Grimodus uh, species. I have no idea what the function of these spikes on the legs are, but I, I noticed them and I thought it was quite spectacular. So all the butterfly pictures that you see was taken through, the, through my car window with a long lens. Um, interesting find in the park is always your bagworm family. This is a or bag moth um, family, uh, Psychidae. They're quite specific, um, host specific, so you will find them in either acacias or vergilia trees, um, using the thorns of the trees to decorate the uh, silk sack that they spin. The yellow pansy is the butterfly that's been reported the most times in the park on virtual museum, um, but there's a lot of butterfly activity in the park. So I'm just going to run through them and uh, show, show them off a bit. Pale Ranger, there's a garden inspector, the painted lady that also seemed to be everywhere throughout the country, a two-pip policeman, uh, Alice Silverline, on this bottom left is a small elfin, there's a dismal sylph, a plain black eye, and this is sitting on the on my tent in the camp. So that was a bit of luck. A guinea fowl, and you can see a lot of the butterfly photos are actually taken where they are soaking up salts and moisture from wet areas on the road. A hensa parrot, a black pie, a broad bordered acria, your wandering donkey acria, a spotted joker. African leopard, broad bordered grass yellow, your citrus swallowtail, also one of the more common butterflies in the park, a red tip, and the last one on the Lepidoptera is one of my one of my favorites, your crimson speckled footman. Then we get to the birds. The bird that's been reported most in the park, funny enough, is your blue waxbill. Uh, we also have a variety of other wax balls, and I think one of my favorites is the violet eared wax ball. Um, your, the birds that you find in the park is your typical um, bushveld or uh, yeah, bushveld birds. So, Kalahari scrub robin, there's a green winged petalia or the old Melba finch, dusky in indigo bird, Mariko flycatchers. They are very obvious in the park where they hunt from a little perch. Uh, this was just a lucky find, African paradise flycatcher on a nest. Arrowmark babbler, at most of the picnic sites or hides, there will be some arrowmark babbler activity for some reason. Um, Red-billed oxpecker, so when we do a walk in the bush itself, they are a very good indicator for us if there is any rhino around. They, uh, we use their sound as an indicator. There's quite a variety of larks through the park in the park, and I think the two most common larks that we have there is the Sabota lark and your Rufus Nape lark. And then some other beautiful ones, the lilac breasted roller, your violet backed starling, red back shrike, crimson breasted shrike, golden breasted bunting, cinnamon breasted bunting. On the raptor side, also a good variety, African Harrier, Hawk or Gymnogene, Osprey, um, your black-chested snake, eagle and a secretary bird, they both uh, nest in the park, so there's quite a number of good nesting sites, especially on the black-chested snake eagle. Um, we do not have that many vultures in the park, funny enough, because the thermals in the park is not conducive to their uh, presence. They do come in, but not that often. 
cuckoos, during the summer, there is a good variety of cuckoos in the park. So this is a, a greater spotted cuckoo or a great spotted cuckoo. A didra cuckoo, uh, certain times of the year, I don't think you can drive for more, more than half a kilometer without hearing another uh, didra key. Your red-chested cuckoo or pit my fro, uh, levalence cuckoo, classes cuckoo. We also have jacobins and black cuckoo in the park. Three types of hornbill, your southern red-billed hornbill, your African grey hornbill, and your southern yellow hornbill. Stalks, your yellow-billed stalk, white stalk, and marabou stalk. Kingfishers, your malachite kingfisher, your brown-hooded kingfisher, giant kingfisher, and a pied kingfisher. Now this brown-hooded kingfisher, if you look closely, you will see that it caught a vagrant emperor there. And that was my first sighting of a vagrant emperor. So I did ask on the Facebook side if it still counts as a lifer, if you just see it for a few seconds before the birds swallow it, and it did count as a lifer, but I did see a lot of them later. Other water birds is your spoonbills, your greater flamingo, your African jacana, green-backed heron, and then your spur fowl and Franklin's. Natal spur fowl, Swainson's spur fowl, Koki Franklin and uh, Crested Franklin. And then your common ostrich. Unfortunately, you will not see that in the park again. Um, there were quite a good number of them in the park, but once again, as the lion population increased, um, they became easy prey, for, easy prey for the lion and there are no more left. So, and I don't think they will reintroduce them. Um, Cory Buster, and then Barn Owl and Spotted Eagle Owl. Now that, oops, sorry. Just to, to give you a quick comparison of, or a, a quick view of what's happening on the virtual museum, um, you will see that by far the mammal map is, attracts most of your uh, entries, followed by bird pics, leppy map, frog map, frog map, map etc. So I think one of the pet hates I have in the park is when you talk to the public and the people say, I have seen nothing today, which really literally translates into, I have not seen a lion or a leopard or a cheetah today. So, you know, we've got nearly 600 species identified uh, uh, to species level in the park. And so far I have on my tally for Pilansburg 236 species uh, species, uh, just over 400 submissions. So I think there's a, a lot of learnings for me. I still have a lot of uh, species to find and I think I must make a big effort to try and get more trees and dung beetles and mushrooms mapped. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for listening to my talk. Thank, thank you. You had, I mean, <laughs> that was absolutely incredible. Yo, um, <laughs> I definitely, we all need to visit Blansburg. Uh, uh, I visited many years ago and I remember it was really special. Um, but just seeing your photos now again, I'm like, wow, <laughs> I have to get down there again. Uh, if uh, anybody wants to buy a map there, just give me a call. I can always give you advice or I may even meet you in the park too. To join you <laughs> yeah thank you yeah, that was that was really amazing and and just like you said now at the end like um people always focus on the big five but it's the little five thousand <laughs> that's actually the the most fascinating and that we need to um uh, get mapping and um that's why projects like i don't know how to map and let map it's really so useful um, I did see two questions there. 